Fintech Hot Seat is on payment shifts. Is it transitional or transformational? And I'm joined with Michelle St. Rose from CorePay. Michelle, welcome to the Hot Seat. Hello, Craig. How are you today? Very good. It's good to uh, see you again. I'm looking forward to our discussion. Um, I wanted to cover uh, several different areas in our discussion. One about payment changes and payment c- complexity. Hear your thoughts there. Move through compliance, touch on spending, and then get to the core question. Is it is, are payment shifts transitional or transformational? So let's begin with payment changes and payment complexity. These issues of complexity, multiple banks, multiple currencies, multiple countries, uh, multiple payment formats, payment types, these are significant items for most companies. Uh, and as you look at this, what, what do you think, uh, you know, what are you seeing from research and from your experience as being a payments expert? What are, what are the most challenging things that companies are being faced with with uh, payment complexity and changes. Sure, so you mentioned some of the really heavy ones, Craig, you know, the complexities around multi-currencies and different bank accounts. But we're also, those are things that we've been dealing with in accounts payable for quite a while now. And research is showing us that, you know, the manual process and how we were handling those complexities is just not working anymore. We've got to transform as we're talking about today in a lot of ways. But it's, it's becoming a, a challenge and you compound that. The fraud opportunities that a lot of these bad people are having on our accounts, uh, it, it's, it's becoming really challenging. What makes fraud so challenging, for an example? And then I want to get into the system side. Sure. Well, on the fraud side, you know, I, I want to really mention that it's important that companies recognize that we're putting additional tasks on our finance department for things to look for and understand and uh, recognize in the fraud process, something that your finance team was really not a part of in the past. That's why I feel that additional resources are somewhat necessary to really make that work. That's really a challenge. I mean, your AP professionals are experienced in coding and entry and getting those invoices into your ERP, uh, checking for the proper Validation around the vendor is something that was not at the top of their list before. So it's a big challenge. You know, Corpe underwrote some research um, and uh, in the show notes or in the link below, uh, those who are listening can download uh, some of the, the research reports on this. Um, I just wanted to point that out. But one of the things, Michelle, that came up on the complexity side, besides currencies, countries, number of banks, is also a multiple system, so complexity within company. They're dealing with uh, com- uh, additional uh, payable systems, ERP systems, treasury systems that may have arisen out of acquisitions over time. Um, how big of an issue is that uh, for companies to consider as part as part of their plan to uh, manage payments going forward? It's it's big, especially if there's no automation at all in your finance department, you know? So the acquisition of, uh, of new uh, entities along with new ERPs can bring a lot of strain again, uh, enveloping those into one and still categorizing them separately. I believe automation with an agnostic tool that can absorb data from multiple ERPs would really help answer that question and help a lot of teams uh, uh, reap the benefit of that type of visibility. Because if you're looking at real true cha- challenges, visibility in the payments uh, field, that is a challenge to recognize and understand how your vendors are, are accepting payments and when are they willing to uh, really put the discount uh, 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 conversation on the table. We can't see that without the data. Michelle, great points. You know, So this idea of multiple systems, and as I I uh, mentioned in the intro, companies are dealing with multiple payment banks, multiple payment types. And, you know, I, I think as most people who are listening understand, there's a number of new payment rails, uh, new faster payment types, more accelerated instant payments, uh, depending on whatever country. And there's, there's usually at least one or two that's come on board. And so you talked about a more centralized system in, in terms of a way to address that complexity. But my, my real question is, how complex is it 
for organizations? Uh, and is there, what is the interplay between number of systems, banks, accounts, new payment rails? Why, why does it become challenging to nearly impossible or does it become challenging and nearly impossible to handle with some traditional I approaches? I think it's challenging, Craig, but it's not impossible. We have to really take notice when you're acquiring uh, additional entities and bringing on additional ERPs. Some of them must, uh, we have to keep because of the nature of the business. So they're not going anywhere. We're going to have multiple ERPs and multiple bank accounts running through these corporations. And we've got to be able to handle the data to make the good decisions to keep them all working. The best way, uh, again, uh, I'll say, and it's happening more and more because, you know, we're taking these smaller companies and we're coming together and we're pooling our resources. The same applies to the technology you're going to use uh, to transform all of that data and make it beneficial for you. So I don't think we can stress the several bank accounts and the several cash accounts or several ERPs. We have to stress how we're going to take one tool, bring that all together, and uh, get the best of it. And this is a decision that senior management around the states has to start. So we're not losing any complexity. We're adding more payment types, but there are some solutions there. Um, you know, one of the one of the other challenges that we haven't talked about yet uh, is compliance. Compliance is another, I'll call it, payments issue that we have to deal with. Uh, KYC was the top listed regulation that requires significant resources of organizations. This know your customer for setting up accounts um, is, a, is a dramatic concern, a, a time suck, if you will. Um, how, how can companies look at compliance items? Is it an opportunity for efficiency, just something that has to be done? Um, so, you, you know, are these difficulties or opportunities? And um, We'll touch on three groups. I, I'll probably only ask you about a couple of them, but first, maybe we can talk about pure compliance things. So any comments on know your customer, OFAC sanction screening, foreign bank account reporting? I have to start this topic with one statement. Compliance around our vendors was never a factor in the finance where I was, okay? Our, our factors were getting those invoices paid. And again, that's why I feel it's very important for uh, our clients to understand the shift that's happening and what's needed from your teams to really capture knowing your customers and OFAC and HIPAA information. It's, it, it's, it's, uh, it's a new language to the AP professional, but there's, those are things that we need to know now. Now, either that's additional resources that you're going to bring into your corporation, or again, take advantage of a tool that can incorporate and envelop and ensure that all of the compliances around every category of your vendor master are met. That could be, you know, recertifications always coming in. Where do you have that type of uh, effort or time in your team today to take on these additional tasks that are now necessary in really managing your vendor master. These are things that we really have to think about regardless of the type of compliance that might be in, in, in our conversation today. These four that you're speaking of though, to really continue and be on top of it, knowing your customers are very important, knowing your business and what is necessary as far as compliance, again, is very important. Will this be handled by your finance team? Or are you going to bring on additional resources and uh, really enhance your vendor relationships uh, to, to really benefit from the compliances that are in place today? It's up to you guys. So, so Michelle, is compliance um, at an elevated level now? Um, oh, yes. Moder and do you, do you see it increasing uh, or staying about the same, maybe, maybe decreasing? So I see it increasing, not only in compliance, because of all the transfer of data. We have to be so concerned as to where it's stopping, who is retrieving what, and they're going to put more steps in place to really carry that. A lot of that is going to be driven initially from the vendor master, from any ERP that is really administered by your AP department. So 
again, it's going to come around to retraining what's important, what to recognize, and what to know based on the categoriz categorization of your vendors. Thanks. Thanks, Michelle. The, um, the second group I'm, I'm probably just going to comment on, feel free to, uh, to weigh in because I really want to get to the, the technology area uh, for the time that we have. Um, this is about payments platforms, payment rails, payment rail security. So, we, you know, we've, we've certainly seen PCI DSS, payment card industry, data security standard that's been around for well over a decade now um, as standards for anybody in the payments platform, how you protect data, how people are trained, uh, just, you know, an audit function for that. And so we see that uh, having happened well over a decade ago, um, closing in on a decade, we have the SWIFT customer security program, trying to make sure all the surface areas of attack, all of the points of entry into the SWIFT messaging network, um, ensuring that people or companies that are, are connecting have a certain security standard. And this is a, another area of, you know, compliance and, and regulation support that that's just rolling out one after another. We can look at uh, NACHA and see some requirements there as well. So this is a this is just a trend where there's more compliance that fits in with your answer about you see it increasing. Uh, we see it on the payment platform side as well. But I really wanted to get get back with you on the third group about compliance, banking regulations or payment regulations related to technology. Um, some of the the items that you see are PSD two, Payment Services Directive two. Um, and some compliance uh, elements like SOC 1 and SOC 2 reporting for technology. What is going on here uh, and what, what should payment professionals uh, keep in mind with regard to these, uh, these regulations? It's really important that we understand that uh, our partners in our payment process are following the regulatory statutes that are necessary to keep your payments secure. Again, um, finance, and all of these types of regulations and compliances, this was not our bag, it was not our forte, but it's become more important. We lean on our IT departments to ensure that the SOC SOC 1 and SOC 2 are in place. Um, it's not something that we can uh, ensure and train our teams on alone. There has to be someone who has knowledge of the regulations and the changes that occur and are involved in the day-to-day -day, uh, banking regulations as well to understand when we have to make shifts. But SOC 1, SOC 2 are, um, what do you say, the naturals that we look for first. Yeah, that's great. On the, on the, on the heavy compliance and uh, security side, um, you know, PST 2 the Payment Services Directive 2, is a, I would say it's more of a forced use of uh, modern technology, the, the European uh, standard that uh, banks have to support APIs for a certain type of activity uh, is, you know, the, the regulator push to make sure people are using newer technology to allow other technology firms to support not only secure payments, but ease of payments, uh, embedding payments in multiple systems. How is that type of, I'll just call it, uh, technological modernization requirement um, do you see more of those things coming? How is that impacting not only uh, payments in Europe, but um, by, by ripple effect, uh, you know, payments in uh, Asia Pacific, payments in North America? It's going to affect us here as well, because as long as our business is growing and maturing and we're touching all of these uh, spaces, we have to be in compliance. We have to have the regulations and we're going to have to make decisions on where we really want to do the business. Again, it's out of awe, some of the forte of some of our finance professionals. We have to be aware of it, but we really rely on uh, the technology departments of our, of our corporations to really drive that. The finance, it's really about giving uh, the proper information to keep us in compliance, right? So some changes do occur from the user perspective as to what is necessary to be captured, what can we not send over in a file, things of those natures uh, your finance team has to be aware of, and that will again take training. Yeah, Michelle, okay, so let's, let's shift to spending. Uh, companies are planning to spend on payments, they are spending on payments. Uh, where are they spending on payments and why? 
where are they spending? Well, we've been doing a lot of research looking at where the dollars are going. And a lot of our, um, our research tells us that we're looking more at um, agnostic payment platforms to help us in the spending day-to-day uh, -day process. Um, we've also noticed in a lot of our reports that um, we're trying to mitigate the costs that are associated with the check process. But um, in my opinion, I'm seeing the transfer of burden to the cost being on the other side. So the spending is not going to go away to truly process a payment. What needs to happen in the transformation is that we take advantage of how we spend our dollars. But uh, spending around uh, plat payment platforms or any time type of invoice automation or capture is where we see most of the dollars going in, in most of the corporations. Michelle, in the 2022 Global Payment Survey that was done in conjunction with our two firms, CorePay and Strategic Treasure, one of the top areas of investment uh, or spend, um, the reason for spend, number one was increasing control over payment workflows to reduce fraud, and two, reducing processing cost, internal and external. Those are the top two items, followed by reduction in errors and, and, and visibility to check status. Is, is payment fraud more important than uh, efficiency drivers? Um, and is that going to continue? Uh, what, what do you say to that? The payment fraud right now, because of our environment, is driving the conversation. You give it a year and they will, they'll be neck and neck with efficiencies again. But because of the way, again, we are making our payments, we're opening, opening ourselves up for more fraud. Whereas we, I feel that the check process in a lot of ways, and this might be off topic, gave us a little bit more empowerment on our dollars being spent versus what we're going to now with the ACH and the uh, technology. Once your money's gone out the door, it's out the door. And you're not gonna get that back that quickly. So you have to take all of these things into consideration when you're planning a, a payment automation tool. I think it's our best way uh, as maybe item number three to assist corporations to really build a, a, a wall to help them with the fraud process along with the payment process because it's two, plays two parts. And once you build that wall, you'll also be building efficiencies. So it kind of happens uh, concurrently uh, by uh, enabling a new a product. A couple of follow-up questions. I'm gonna throw a bunch of stats at you and ask a couple of questions. So 40% uh, uh, of large businesses and 37% of small businesses have higher or significantly higher spending plans for payment services and technology in the next year. Um, I guess the, the, a short question for you is, do you expect that to remain elevated for uh, less than five years, five to 10 years, or even beyond 10 years? I think it's going to stay elevated. I really do. Because if you don't uh, make this transformation in one level or another, you're not going to make it in business. So it's, it's bound to grow. It, it, people, there are going to come a time where checks won't even be accepted. You, you have no choice. If you want to be, if you want to play, you're going to have to uh, get the right back. Getting down to a more, uh, I'll call it refined set of questions for you or, or statistics. Um, the top, uh, the top five spending areas from 23% to 30% of companies identified these as areas they're going to invest significantly included AP automation, which is, you know, aligned with what you were saying uh, earlier for um, centralized systems or payment hubs, we have a couple of questions like payment factories, hubs, AP automation technology, there's significant spend there. But if we also look at ERP payment modules, treasury management system payment modules, and APIs, application programming interface faces, it looks like we have two very large areas of spend. One is on core technology, um, you know, within AP systems, for example, and then there's this other area of significant spend of embedded payment technology, perhaps embedded in an ERP and a TMS, the use of API so it can go anywhere. Are we seeing this, you know, increased size of 
payments activity wherever a specialty system uh, or wherever you'd like to make payments. Is this changing what's going on or just making life easier? How would you, how would you see this or explain this? Sometimes changes for the better, but again, it has to be something that's really thoughtful. I see, I'm seeing when I'm out there and, and speaking to clients that you have to put the thought around what you're really going to accomplish and what you're looking to get from either a platform or embedding more dollars into your ERP to create that same type of um, uh, experience from the payment side, right? And how significant or how impactful will the changes to your ERP happen or occur in five years versus a tool outside of your ERP that might grow with you within the five years and not with the substantial dollars that sometimes come along with a, a, an ERP financial system. So it, it, it is a few things that make up that decision and, and how I see technology growing, but it's going to grow and they're going to have to make, they're going to be some bad decisions made. They're going to try to pinch pennies and embed more dollars into the ERP, but it doesn't always give you the results that you're looking for. I personally, from being in automation from 20 years ago to now, I see uh, limiting the experiences in your ERP and pushing all of that data to a tool that can really uh, benefit you by creating the reports that your culture needs and creating the activity and the workflows that your culture needs to pay those invoices with more accuracy. So uh, I foresee us becoming more of an extension to an ERP than it being making the choice of, do I go with ERP or do I go with a, a side tool? Yeah, it seems like that um, there's more payment types. None of the other ones fall off. And, and this is just an extension of pay wherever you want to. It's not like exactly, it's going to be one or the sir. other. Some of those tools are built just for those specifics and to, as, as uh, money transfers and, and payments grow, your ERP is not in a position to grow with you, right? That's when those dollars are being spent on that. So, you know, it's really a consideration, again, of senior management and your technology and your uh, ERP that you're using currently. Uh, what's that going to bring you? So there's a lot of thought around it. I'm, I'm anxious to see how it looks in five years. Yeah, certainly. So, so Michelle, now let's, let's talk about the the view of the level of change in payments, the, the payment shifts that are occurring. Are they incremental or transformational? Are they transitional or are they transformation? Is everything just a little change or are we seeing uh, very significant changes um, in payments or, or will we see those? What, what's your view on that? And, and, and maybe you could get into why. So, the, the level of significance and the changes that I'm seeing now, I'm, I'm really not sure because the changes that I'm seeing are changes that are being made uh, internally, for example, in one, in one company, and, and we'll look at this globally, right? But you're making changes in how you're paying, and they're making these changes without the right information. So with them making those changes, I'm going to say that this is incremental at this time and um, not transformational because we are going to see uh, the, the shortcomings of some of the decisions that we've made very shortly. The expenses around how we've chosen to pay and what we thought we were going to get from paying methods such as ACH or EFT are not coming to fruition or uh, will take more work to truly come to fruition, which is going to delay that being a transformative type of thing in our space. But it will happen once we recognize uh, step by step how to uh, take back our purchasing power that we've given away through the ACH process, make it more not just for the vendor but also for you as a corporation, beneficial. And then we'll see that transformation just skyrocket. So we're in flux right now. That's the way I'd like to say. Okay, so I wanna ask this next question. Um, 
on this period of being in flux and, and this transitional to transformational, um, are there going to be more payments in general or less? Are there going to be more global payments or less? Um, and then are there going to be payments in more systems, i.e. embedded in treasury platforms, trading systems, ERPs? So is there, is there more, 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 or is it, what, what are we, what are we going to see? We're going to see more, more, more. Then we're going to see a pause for results. And then when those results do not come back the way that the expectations are matching to those mores, that's where we're going to see the low and the retake. But we definitely will see this increase. We're going to see more payment types, more payment methods, more payment transformation, more opportunities for monies to go back and forth. We might see a decrease in the local payments and we will see an increase in the amount of our payments, right? So we were paying 10 grand a month. We're gonna see us combining our resources uh, through acquisitions and through uh, just doing better uh, strategic vendor resourcing and our payments will be larger but uh, more uh, but less uh, frequent, if that makes sense. But there will be transformation throughout the process, yeah. Sure. So, Michelle, um, on the more payments overall, is that um, why is that just a beyond just regular growth of the economies that exist? Is that is that due to things like uh, Uber offering drivers the ability to get paid four times a day? Um, is it that type of activity that's uh, creating this growth in payments, or is there something else uh, driving it? as well i think the, the growth in payment again comes back it has a lot to do with our economy but it comes back to uh you know like information i've learned from strategic strangers corporations really understanding their purchasing power right so they're taking a look back and wanting to make sure that their dollars are being spent in the right way and most beneficial they're willing to spend but they want to spend smart so that's why I feel that payments will increase because the more you spend, the more money you make. And a lot of our teams are seeing that, but how we do that is gonna be very important. And that's where our clients are making much, much more uh, strategic decisions. So what are, what are the shifts that you see in the next five to 10 years with payments? I see um, more, um, well, less pay, nearly no pay, no paper, right? No paper checks. That's going to be a thing. I hope you're right. <laughs> I hope there's not <laughs> no, only a lot a, less, but I hope you're right that there that we that we get to zero paper. That would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think it's going to be something that um, you know, with our environment, it's our economy. It's not just going to be the finance uh, world that's going to be driving that. We have to um, adjust and evolve. And checks are just, it just doesn't work, right? So uh, I see that definitely depleting. I also see, as we said before, an increase in um, automation of payments. I definitely see credit card payments taking a, a very big high on that. And we're going to come to some type of, you know, push and pull and have that rub around the fees and, and whatnot. But it, again, it's going to be written off as a cost of business. This is what we're going to have to do to be efficient and use in our people and our efforts and dollars in, in just better directions. It's really wasteful. So I foresee less checks, more automation. I also see um, uh, teams like CorePay having more of a presence and being more efficient and effective than, I hate to say, the larger banks sometimes because we're going to be able to really help you in your culture, in your business, and, uh, and make plans. But yeah, there's definitely gonna be changes in the next five years. So, so if we go out to, let's, let's say uh, 10 years from now, um, will there be less of a focus on payments in that they become more embedded in processes in contracts? For example, they're embedded in the ERP, a trading platform, uh, a treasury system, uh, or, or even less involved in a payment system is one, one, one element. 
The other is like things like smart contracts where payment terms, agreements could all be layered in and become more automated. Will there be a less of a focus on payments by itself because it gets embedded in processes and contracts and terms? Uh, or will it, will it stay the same or will it look differently? What do you, what do you think as, as we look out 10 to 15 years? And what we got to remember is that all of that technology and all of that stuff is great. That's payments. That's money going out the door. And some things are not going to change. With all that technology that we're going to have, they're still going to have that ownership or control that someone's going to want to see. So, yeah, there are going to be changes, but there will always be involvement. All right. Michelle, uh, Michelle St. Rose, thank you so much for uh, joining this uh, FinTech Hot Seat on Payment Shifts, Transitional or Transformational. As always, great to talk with you, Greg.